Welcome to Electron Online. A very big portion of our temperature models is the assumption that increases in carbon dioxide lead to increases in temperature, which therefore lead to increases in water evaporation, which therefore lead to increases in moisture in the atmosphere, water vapor, which then would have a feedback mechanism which causes additional heating. But on the last video, we already saw that increases in carbon dioxide do not directly make a significant difference in the change in the temperature. The first 20 parts per million, a very small fraction, about 1 in 20, which is about 5% of the total uh, atmospheric carbon dioxide, already accounts for half the greenhouse effect. Hmm. So is that the same for water vapor? Perhaps it is. But nevertheless, let's at least assume that increases in temperature, and we have seen some increases since the 1970s, 1980s, should that then cause the water vapor in the atmosphere to increase? And of course, common knowledge and logic should say yes. But when we take a look at that, when we actually do satellite measurements of the various layers of the troposphere, which is, by the way, where most of the water vapor is located, we find that it's actually a mixed bag. At the very lower end of the troposphere, where the atmospheric pressure is somewhere between 700 and 1000 millibar, this is pretty well the layer where most of us live, there's been a slight increase in the moisture in the water vapor in the atmosphere. So that seems to bear out. But then as we go higher up into the atmosphere, in the middle of the troposphere, now when we are at a, a pressure of about 500 to 700 millibars, we see actually a decrease in the water vapor. And as we continue to go up to a region where the atmospheric pressure is somewhere between 300 and 500 millibar, now we're at a height of about 5 miles or 8 kilometers, which is pretty close to the top of Mount Everest, again we see a slight decrease in the atmospheric um, water vapor. And so together, when we add all the various layers of the troposphere, the bottom layer does of course have more weight to it, literally, because there's more water vapor and there's more uh, atmospheric pressure, so there's more atmospheric molecules. But together, there's actually a very tiny increase in the total water vapor uh, content of the atmosphere, which means that if there's only a slight increase, we would not expect much of a feedback mechanism, which is maybe why the models and the actual temperatures seem to be diverting, diverting from one another, because we have measured the water vapor in the atmosphere and by no means has it increased to any of the levels that we would expect it to increase with the increasing amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. So at least our empirical evidence, the measurement seems to match what we're seeing with the real temperature recording versus the model of the temperatures that they are indeed diverting from one another. And this is probably one of the big reasons why the main mechanism by which we think the temperature is going to go up doesn't seem to be happening in the atmosphere, at least not at current times. And this is part of the reason why we see that big diversion between actual temperatures recorded and the temperatures predicted in the models. And that's how it is.